Well, it's a perfect moment, I think, to introduce Miriam Cates, Conservative <laughs> Member of Parliament for Penistone. And, of course, you've got a chunk of Barnsley in your constituency. Uh, Miriam, we saw previously with Michelle the hands up in the room. People are very, very disappointed. An 80-seat majority. You, part of this big red wall, these seats in many cases that have been Labour for years, and boom, you're all in, you're elected. What's gone wrong? Well, I hope you'll just let me start with the positives very quickly first. So we have delivered Brexit, as you said, for a yes. long time. That was Even that was in doubt. So I think we need to think back. We have actually done it. We I have technically left the EU. I think the narrative that a lot of the media in Westminster peddles about our current economic problems being caused by Brexit is just not true if you look at problems in other Western countries. So that's not true. You know, there are other reasons for our economic problems. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the freedoms, the sovereignty, the control of immigration that Brexit promised has not been delivered. And look at immigration. We are actually in control of immigration now. The problem is that we have allowed far too much immigration because we've set the, the yeah, bar too and, low. And this is because the Conservative Party doesn't believe in it. I mean, today, Philip Hammond, you know, Chancellor of the Exchequer, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, says the way to bring inflation down is even more mass immigration. Yeah. Isn't yeah. the truth of it that the Tory party supports, and the big businesses with them, they actually support this? Well, the Conservative Party is a broad church, and there are elements within the party that do support that. You're right, and clearly the Treasury does, and the, the uh, mechanism that the Treasury always reaches for when the labour market is tight is immigration. But that's a, a short-term solution. I wouldn't even say it's a solution. But there are plenty of others of us in, in the party that are pushing for much tighter controls on immigration, because at the end of the day, if we don't train up our own people, if we don't invest in our own skills, in our own capital, we'll never be productive. You know, there is there is a short-term pain in the labour market. There's no doubt about that. But to keep reaching for immigration, to keep reaching no, well, for I agree with cheap labour as well. But you're right. I mean, we haven't delivered on that. But there is a move now, I think, absolutely, to, to raise the bar in terms of who can come here. But it, it's not going to be easy. I'm, there I'm, are... I, I'm really sorry, Miriam. I heard all this in 2019, and you actually lowered the bar. You lowered the bar. I, Anybody on minimum wage from anywhere in the world can come into this country. And now I hear Rishi saying, he said in Prime Minister's questions yesterday, we're stopping the boats. Is hell. <laughs> with you and I was one of the MPs who pushed for an amendment to the illegal migration bill to allow the Home Office to ignore these section 35 notices from the European courts with others in Parliament I'm pushing for tighter controls on immigration I know that you know that's no excuse for the party as a whole but there are there are people within the party who absolutely acknowledge I understand that and that. are pushing for no it. I get that and I watch it very carefully but you're in a minority why should I mean assuming the elections next October or whenever it's going to be why should people vote conservative next time well, I think right now that is a good question. We've got a lot of work to do. No, I agree. The, the, the demands that were put on us in 2019, the reason that people voted for us in 2019, voted for you earlier on that year, yeah. voted for Brexit, you know, that demand for a new type of economy that works for places like Barnsley that have lost their industrial core because of the economic revolution we've seen over 30 years, people that voted for cultural security that didn't like the way that Brussels and, frankly, Westminster have pushed ideologies on people that, you know, most people don't agree with, that demand is still there. You know, we've met, met it partially by delivering Brexit, by standing up on some of these issues, but I agree, we haven't fully delivered it. All right. That well, is the challenge that's a to very, us. That's a very frank, honest answer, um, and it really, really is. Tough day. Um, interest rates up half a percent. Anybody with mortgages, it's really, really hard. And I'm going to drill into that mm. with Liam Halligan in a moment. Um, so we, I, I think, we, you know, tough times are coming for the economy. Mm. But uh, where you've made a name for yourself in your short time as a Member of Parliament is you've stood up very strongly on one or two issues, and what I want to pick up on. I was astonished when I heard the audio recording of a 13-year-old girl in a school in East Sussex when another kid had identified as a cat, and the 13-year-old says she must have lost her mind, and, and the teacher threatening her, saying, well, maybe you should leave and go to another school. Now, that, trans ideology, etc. Miriam, you've been strongly outspoken. Just give us in a couple of minutes where you stand on this. Well, I mean, it's a hugely complex issue, but I think it's just extraordinary how in probably fewer than 10 years we've gone from, you know, almost everybody agreeing that there are only two sexes, you're male or female, boys or girls, you know, that, that's pretty much the end of it. Um, to this kind of rampant ideology that is now so embedded in schools that we think at least 80% of schools now have children who have a trans or non-binary or whatever you want to call it identity. And with teachers clearly, some incredibly confused and don't know what to do, but some clearly pushing this ideology, it's become so confused. 
and I think, unfortunately, the government has not caught up with this quick enough. And really, the only answer is to, to prevent schools from doing this, to say, you know, look, we believe in biological sex. That's the evidence. We should absolutely be compassionate to children who present with these difficulties and find the best way forward for them. But that does not include pretending that girls can become boys and that there isn't a diff difference between the sexes. And we have to be very clear on this. And I think, you know, it's one thing for adults to talk about this and dress how they want, of course, in a free country. But it's very different when you're dealing with children who absolutely rely on the adults in, in, in charge to tell them the truth. Um, and we've got to stand up for that. How much abuse online do you get from the left for saying things like this? Well, a, a fair bit. I, I joined Twitter a week ago, so um, I'll, I'll keep you posted. But, um, <laughs> That's a very but, brave thing to do. But I actually get far less abuse than the women on the left. So people like Rosie Duffield, Labour MP, who's a Horrible. friend of mine. I, I think people expect Conservatives to say Conservative things, so probably I get less pushback than, than women on the left. But they certainly get absolutely appalling abuse and attack for it, yeah, and are very brave. Do. They really do. And, and, and for that particular... Member of Parliament for Canterbury had to attend her own party conference yeah. with security. Absolutely awful. Well, I have to say, I think the majority of parents are increasingly alarmed at what their kids are being taught in schools. And I think lockdown brought it home to us because suddenly the laptop was on the kitchen yeah. table and they realised mm. this ideology that was being pushed mm. on our kids. Final thought, Miriam, what's it been like being an MP? Um, different to how I imagined, much more, it's very interesting, you get to meet brilliant people, that's the best part of it, hugely demanding, and I think there's constant sense that you can never do enough, but, you know, just have to take it day by day, I'm enjoying it. And what will you do after the, after the next election? Uh, well, that depends on my voters. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam Cates, thank you very much indeed you know. for joining us.